When it comes to luxurious watches, there are a few brands that seem to have cracked the code and understood all that is needed to create the perfect luxurious watch. There is said to be a holy trinity in the watchmaking world, and Vacheron Constantine is definitely in that trinity. Although Rolex might not be breathing in the rare air that Vacheron Constantine occupies, it's still a luxury brand in its own right. At first glance, it is difficult to see why there should be any basis of comparison between the two watches. Rolex watches are built on its sport and tool watches, while Vacheron Constantine has a dress signature of beautiful aesthetics and technical prowess. But many watch collectors have asked the question, is Vacheron Constantine better than Rolex? So in this video, we'll be breaking down both brands to find out. Be sure to stick around to the end, because you do not want to miss this. Vacheron Constantine is one of the oldest watch brands in the world. The brand has a rich and luscious history that reflects in the products released from the company every year. Since 1755, Vacheron Constantine has opened its doors and started releasing high-end timepieces. This gives the brand a whopping 150-year lead on Rolex, which opened its doors in 1905. With a history spanning 250 years, Vacheron Constantine has several notable achievements under its belt. Firstly, in 1770, the brand created its first complicated watch, and in 1779, the brand produced the first engine turned dials. With the turn of the century, the engineers over at Vacheron Constantine created the Pantograph. The creation was highly vital in the standardization of watch movements in the watch community. In 1869, Vacheron Constantine released its first chronometer, and its first anti magnetic timepiece came out in 1885. One of the most important movements in Vacheron Constantine's history is 1901, when he became the first watchmaker to receive the coveted hallmark of Geneva. To celebrate their 200th anniversary, Vacheron Constantine launched the Caliber 1003, the world's thinnest manually wound caliber. To celebrate their 250th anniversary, the brand released the Tour de Ile, a timepiece that showcased 16 complications and 843 parts. Through it all, Vacheron Constantine remained true to their motto, do better if possible, and that is always possible. <laughs> now, Rolex is the obvious younger brand, but it has managed to build itself with many impressive accomplishments. Within five years of opening its doors, the brand developed the first watch to receive chronometer certification. Barely four years later, had they received an A-class precision certification, which was often reserved for marine chronometers. In 1926, they released the first water-resistant watch, which they dubbed the Oyster, and in 1931, they patented the first perpetual self-winding mechanism. In 1945, they introduced the first self-winding wristwatch that displays the date on the dial, and in 1953, the Submariner was debuted. The Submariner was the first dive watch that is water-resistant of up to 100 meters. A scant year later, they released the first watch that displays in multiple time zones simultaneously, dubbed the GMT Master. In 1956, Rolex came up with the day date, the first wristwatch that displays the date and the day of the week, and in 2012, Rolex came up with the Sky Dweller. Now, their age, among other factors, has pushed Vacheron Constantine to its legendary status that very few other watches can reach. Much unlike Vacheron Constantine, Rolex is the largest manufacturer of luxury watches in the world, as it churns out about 2,000 watches a day, while Vacheron Constantine produces only 20,000 watches a year. While the high volume does not push Rolex to Vacheron Constantine's legendary status, it has become the luxury watch that the average layman aspires to own. Rolex also has a more pocket-friendly entry price tag. For instance, $6,000 is enough to purchase a Rolex, although there are stainless steel models which could cost a few thousand dollars more. To get a basic Vacheron Constantine watch, like the 56, one would need $11,700 for the three-handed stainless steel version. The 56 collections have been around since 2018, and it was based on the vintage model that was released in 1956. The watch has an elegantly relaxed styling that is set to fit anywhere whether casual or official. The watch is available in a variety of metals, both precious metals and ordinary. There are only 12 pieces of the 56 series, and they all carry the Vacheron Constantine brand with their complications. The closest watch Rolex has in comparison is the Datejust. The watch originally emerged in 1945, back during Rolex's 40th anniversary. The revamped watch comes with a new type of bracelet and five semicircular links, which give the watch buttery smooth suppleness. The Datejust also made use of stainless steel singly, 
and incorporated it into various flavors of gold to create a Rolesser blend. It also gives the watch a pragmatic touch that makes it more appealing to Rolex's customer base. Regardless of the age and the production volume, both brands are doing incredibly well for themselves, as they both produce unbelievably well-made watches. Rolex is known as the most famous luxury watch brand in the world today, and Vacheron Constantine is also well appreciated with its special credits. Apart from its well-deserved position as one of the big three in the watch world, Vacheron Constantine is the maker of the most complicated watch in the world, the double-dialed VC57260. The VC57260 was made complete with an outstanding 57 complications. The watch is valued at an estimated figure of $8 million. <laughs> Sometimes the choice of a better brand can be highly personalized because you need to ask yourself, what makes one watch a lot more preferable than the other to me? The answer to this is the features, specifications and characteristics that appeal to you the most in a watch. Both Rolex and Vacheron Constantine have made several watches that appeal to a wide range of audiences. For some, Vacheron Constantine appeals to them because of the complicated nature of their watches. For others, Rolex is their watch of choice because of its maximum resale value, tough build that accommodates everyday wearing, and its apparent luxury. When asking which watch is better, the real question is, what are the qualities that you are looking for in a watch? For those who are interested in brand recognition, Rolex is a better option, as Vacheron Constantine is not as world famous as Rolex. The average person will most likely recognize Rolex watches and have no idea what a Vacheron Constantine watch is. That isn't to say that Vacheron Constantine watches are so obscure. After all, they are highly recognized as one of the top 50 Swiss brands out there. While Vacheron Constantine rests comfortably in the 15th spot, Rolex is sitting pretty on the top spot. When it comes to the horology know-how, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that Vacheron Constantine comes out better than the two. This is one of the reasons why the Vacheron Constantine watches are so expensive. Another reason why the Vacheron Constantine timepieces come out with a high price tag is because of their experience. The extra 150 years that Vacheron Constantine has on Rolex are reflected in the watchmaking process. It also conveniently gives Vacheron Constantine a leg up over Rolex. In terms of resale value, it's quite clear that Rolex watches are ahead of Vacheron Constantine. Vacheron Constantine does have value, but in terms of brand recognition and resale value, they're lagging behind Rolexes. The Rolex brand makes its watches so well that they can hold their resale value a lot more than other brands. In the comparison between Vacheron Constantine and Rolex, Many of the stereotypes turn out to be true. Most of the watches that come out from Vacheron Constantine brand comfortably fall into the dress watch category. Rolex watches, on the other hand, have gained a reputation for themselves as a sport and tool watch. With their standing among the populace, it became easier for Rolex to cross into the pop culture and gain high-profile partnerships with athletes and several sporting events. This is the key factor that has driven the popularity of the Rolex watches. The choice between a Rolex and a Vacheron Constantine watch then boils down to a simple question of choice, aesthetics or function. Rolex watches are produced solely as luxurious watches, with their strict practicality, nothing more and nothing less. Vacheron Constantine is deeply into the art, and it focuses on Hort horology. Hort horology is regarded as the absolute pinnacle of luxury watchmaking, and this is something that Rolex is just not interested in. Rolex have graced the wrists of several United States presidents and other world leaders. Vacheron Constantine watches, on the other hand, have been worn by Napoleon Bonaparte, Pope Puy XI, among other important personalities. These two brands are highly luxurious, but it seems to be the only similarity between them. However, even in the business of providing luxury, it is clear that Rolex and Vacheron Constantine are taking vastly different approaches to provide the best type of timepieces for their clients. So, big question, which brand do you believe is better? And do you own any of their watches? Let us know in the comment section below. If you made it to the end of this video, well done. And we'd really appreciate it if you gave us a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You might want to check out some of our other videos on luxury watches here. Goodbye, Luxcats. Until next time.